Hey guys, how's it going? Coda Man here. Uh, actually, wait a minute. So I wear sunglasses almost every day and it's raining out. So you know what? It's not gonna work. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so I went to my friend's house yesterday to try to uh, do the oil change on the M3 and had never done it before so I figured, you know, I'll give it a shot. I always send it to uh, Eurotech and it was really funny because, you know, I got all the stuff, uh, I got the oil and the oil filter and all the accessories. Uh, I didn't have ramps or jack or anything so I brought it to my friend's house. We got it up there, uh, you know, we had to use some plywood to get it up there because the car is too low, but we got it up on the ramps and got up underneath the car to uh, loosen the drain plug, there's actually two of them, and couldn't do it. I went to use the six millimeter hex, it was pretty much just spinning inside the head. I wasn't able to change the oil. Um, you know, I basically put the car back together, took it back off the ramps, and went and grabbed lunch. Uh, now I'm kind of at a crossroads where I could buy ramps, I could buy a jack, you know, jack stands, uh, oil wrench, all these things and do it myself, which I kind of like the idea of, but at the same time, I'm thinking that, you know, I may just send it to Eurotech next month, or excuse me, next week, and get it done, and then, you know, maybe this summer, look into something. So the point of this is partially to say that, you know, I'm kind of a, a novice when it comes to working on cars, but I really enjoy doing it. Uh, I'm actually, as odd as it sounds, I'm more comfortable working on bikes. But I'm getting, you know, more familiar with doing things with the car. Uh, I want to start doing my own maintenance, you know, now that it's out of warranty, and just kind of, you know, just general upkeep on the car. So I could sit here and bounce back and forth and say, you know, oh, maybe I'll do the oil or, you know, maybe I'll send it to the dealer or, you know, just kind of never make a decision. And especially in business, when you're working with something that you need to be able to make fast decisions. So really successful entrepreneurs, they make decisions at lightning speed. Now, of course, they're making smart decisions. You're not just pulling something out of your ass, but you, you can't sit there and wait too long. You know, so on my way home from my buddy's house, I basically called up uh, Farley at Eurotech and said, hey, I gotta bring my car in next week and I gotta do the oil change. Put that on my calendar for Monday and I'm done. Like, I don't have to deal with it or think about it anymore. So the same thing kind of goes with if, if I have a freelancer that flakes or I have a project that, you know, I have to make a crucial decision, you know, do we finish it, do we bail on it, whatever it happens to be, you just have to be able to make those decisions and, you know, think, you know, kind of weigh the pros and cons you know, so with the oil change example, I would have to buy all the stuff that I don't currently own. It would be more expensive, it would be time consuming, and I, you know, my time is better spent in my business stuff, even on the weekends, because now that it's starting to get nice out, I say that as it's raining, but normally when it starts to get nice out, I can actually go ride the bike and, you know, have some fun during the weekends. You know, so I've wanted to do a video on this topic about, you know, getting things done and not, you know, being uncertain in what you should do. And it just seems so fitting that I kind of had to, it wasn't business related, but I kind of just had to make a decision. Do I go down the road of more expenses in time or do I just get the oil change done and the car back to where it should be and just kind of go about my day? So you know, hopefully this helps you kind of better understand or better explain that in entrepreneurship, small business ownership, even freelancing, you know, which for instance, with freelancing, you still are a small business, you know, so you may be, a sole proprietor or you may just get paid cash to design websites or to do logos but you're still a, you still have to operate like a business and especially if you want to grow to something bigger you definitely have to operate like a business so if you have any comments or questions about this topic definitely leave a comment below uh, like this video subscribe if you're new here and i'll talk to you guys in the next one